Hello and welcome to GBTAC Worldwide Christian Education Online Class, where we are serving you with the Word of God. I am your teacher for this session, Deaconess Robin Miller, and I come to you from the Greater Bethlehem Temple Alpha Sully Church located in Cincinnati, Ohio, in the community of Northside, where our pastor is Bishop James Chapman, our first lady, Lady Robin Chapman, and where we proudly proclaim as a church family, there is a God in Bethlehem and Jesus is his name. As is my custom, I'm going to go over announcements as people are entering the room. Please remember that we have additional Christian Education Sunday School classes on our GBTAC Cincinnati YouTube channel. Now this is for ages 4 through 19. Above those ages, please visit us on our GBTAC.org website so you can get the information for that platform. And voila, here it is for our adult Christian education Sunday school classes. We have them on two platforms. We have them both in person and that's every Sunday morning as the Lord allows at 930 a.m. And also virtually and the telephone number along with the ask, excuse me, access code is being shown to you now. So we invite you to join us in person. I'll rub elbows with your fellow students, have face-to-face -face time with your teacher, or on our virtual platform where you will he hear our dynamic teachers break down the Word of God for understanding and life application. Either way, don't deprive yourself of the Word. Of the word. Join us either in person or virtually. I apologize. I'm a little tongue-twisted today. <laughs> So along with that, while you're on our website getting the necessary information to join your Christian Education Sunday School class, we invite you to get two additional numbers. One of which is our prayer line. You are not in this alone. Please call our prayer line. Receive prayer from our prayer warrior. Allow them to pray over your requests with you. Now, you do not, I repeat, you do not have to be a member of the Greater Bethlehem Temple Apostolic Church to call our prayer line and receive prayer. They are there with outstretched arms and hands of the Lord Jesus Christ to minister to you in prayer. You can also talk to them about the plan of salvation. They will be willing to talk to you about that. Being baptized in Jesus' name, whether it's virtual or in person, they can explain that to you in the plan of salvation that God has provided to us to be reconciled to himself so that we are in right relationship with him, which we've been talking about. So, but the bottom line that I would like you to remember is that you are not in this alone. Call our prayer line. The other number that I encourage you to get is that of our office telephone number. Call our pastor. Introduce yourself. Allow him to introduce himself. Let him know that you've been stopping by the temple and you can do that by calling our office telephone number to make an appointment to speak with him. This is your cordial invitation to come and be a part of our additional services. We have live worship service every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock as the Lord allows. And also Tuesday night, 7 o'clock Bible class, Bible exploration. We have just started a series being taught by my pastor and it is called the challenge of self-exploration or excuse me, self-examination, <laughs> I apologize, self-examination. Oh boy, we are only on page two of the notes. There is so much involved in this class. We are being fed mightily through the word of God by the man of God. So stop by the temple either in person and we also broadcast those service virtually live through various platforms such as Facebook, such as our YouTube channel, our um, our church website, and also you can see on Instagram. So don't deprive yourself of the word. You are invited to join us.
while you're on our page, we invite you to like and subscribe. Hit the reminder bell so that you receive additional content as it becomes available. And we thank you. For more upcoming events, please visit our website, gbtac.org, and stay tuned for our announcements that are made during our broadcasts. So your homework was to read ahead for this week's lesson. And also in honor of Black History Month, we are reading about persons of color in the Bible. And this week we were reading about Zipporah. She was married to Moses and I directed you to Numbers chapter 12 to read about her. Now, first, I want to apologize. I gave you the reference of Numbers chapter 12. Even though Zipporah is mentioned in Numbers chapter 12, that is where she was mentioned concerning a conflict regarding the family that she had married into. That's not actually where you could learn a lot about her. The reference should have been Exodus chapter 4. Now, in your research, you may have found that, but I apologize for giving you an incorrect reference reference to begin with. So looking at Zipporah, she was, uh, she was married to Moses after he ran away from Egypt. Now this was after he killed an Egyptian for mistreating a fellish Jewish, Jewish person. He was trying to help, but he didn't do it God's way. So it ended up hurting and making matters worse. Zipporah was a part of the comfort that Moses had while he was in exile from his people. God is so amazing. He gives us strength to endure when we're in our hard places. With Zipporah, Moses was able to start and be a part of a new family. She was the daughter of a priest, a wise man that later helped his son-in-law. Moses to juggle the duties that God had given him as a leader. She was smart. She saved her husband from death by quick thinking. She circumcised their son. So, and, and through that skin, that foreskin at her husband. So while he was being attacked, so she was a wise woman, was able to think under pressure. She was a good helpmeet for her husband. She was a woman of color, married to one of the meekest men on earth, and chosen leader for God's people to lead them out of slavery. We salute Zipporah during our Black History Month. And now it is time for our review. God gave us six pieces to wear as spiritual suit as a spiritual suit as armor. Armor is designed to protect the body in battle and defend it from attack. When we get dressed properly by putting on the whole entire armor of God, we use divine tools provided by God to protect ourselves from spiritual attacks. This also means to protect what we allow into the doorways or gates of our spirit through our ears, eyes, and heart. As a reminder, God has already attained and given us victory through his birth, life, death, and resurrection. It's a fixed fight. All we have to do is stand in that victory using the divine tools of his spiritual armor that he has provided to us. This week, we are talking about Jesus is the greatest of all. Our lesson text will be found in Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 28. And our golden text, our focus verse is Colossians chapter 1, verse 19. Our aim, the purpose of us looking at this lesson, what we hope to get out of it is to see that Jesus is supreme over all the universe. He created all of it. Jesus is supreme over all the universe. He made all things, what we see and what we don't see, the heavens and the earth. 
As the creator, he has ownership and authority. And I was reminded of this last point when attending another Sunday school class for this very same topic. As our creator, he is over us and our lives should reflect that towards him and as an example to others and to give proper credit, if I remember correctly, the teacher of that class was Deacon Franklin. Last week, we discussed getting dressed spiritually with the whole armor of God. This week, we are discussing the greatness of Christ. In this new book of the Bible that we're in for our lesson, the Apostle Paul is writing this letter to address false teaching. He is outlining the supremacy of Christ and who he is. So what do you think of when someone says the greatest of all time? Is it a great athlete or boxer like Muhammad Ali, um, a football quarterback, maybe some Olympians who, who train and discipline themselves and go through hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of training for an event that only occurs every four years? Other athletes, a scientist, maybe a leader of the free world, or even a superhero. All of these people and more make contributions to society that you see on your page that we remember long after they accomplished them. But the true greatest of all time did what no other could do. That is Jesus Christ. And Paul outlines why in our lesson today. Another explanation of the excellency of Jesus is that he is supreme in all things. Now, supreme per Merriam-Webster.com means the greatest, highest in authority, power, or status. That is true of Jesus, as we will see. The first fact that Paul lays out for us is that Jesus is God. Now, when people give you their name, they are, sharing, they are sharing with you their identity. God gave us his name. It is Jesus. He came to earth, wrapped himself in flesh, and lived among us as Jesus, allowing us to touch him, to handle him, to interact with him, and to learn him. Before, we didn't know what God looked like and could not touch him because he is a spirit. As Jesus, he became visible, translating or converting the invisibleness of God to something and someone we could see. Jesus is supreme over all things because he made all things. Genesis, the first book of the Bible, tells us this. The creation isn't greater than the creator, just like a child isn't greater than his or her parent. Now, we find this principle in Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through 25, when Paul is talking about man worshiping God's creation instead of the one, capital O, that made it. So, something to think about here, I want us to pause. Isn't it amazing that the Supreme One, our God chooses the humble things of this world to bring about his purposes. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 28 in the Amplified Version reads, God has selected for his purpose the insignificant base things of the world and the things that are despised and treated with contempt, even the things that are nothing, so that he might reduce to nothing the things that are. So think about it. As the king of the universe, would you have been born in a manger around smelly animals? Would you have lived as a carpenter 
when you were the king of your people and the creator of all that you saw. Hmm. What well, God did in all his glory, he chooses humble things to display himself, excluding no one and including everyone in his perfect will and plan. Jesus is the head of the church. My pastor says frequently, this church belongs to Jesus. He is the one that died for us. I don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in. I'm trying to get to heaven myself, <laughs> he says. <laughs> this connects with our previous lessons of the church belonging to God. And he chooses who is a part of his family, not man. Jesus brought us into right relationship with him. To reconcile, again from Mir MiriamWebster.com, pardon me, it means to restore to friendship or harmony, to settle, to resolve. So how did Jesus do this? Let's look at verse 22. By dying on the cross, he paid the debt of sin for us. With the debt being paid, you cannot be charged or recharged for it. Jesus accepted the punishment for you. A bill that has been paid has a zero balance and cannot be paid again. It is paid in full. It is also good to add here that we cannot pay this bill ourselves even if we wanted to. That is a part of what makes Jesus the greatest of all, doing the greatest thing for all people. So there is a caveat, there's a condition to this. You cannot be charged if, and if is a small word with a huge meaning or condition that's attached to it. If you accept God's free gift, a gift isn't received until it is accepted. If the gift giver continues to outstretch their hand to give something to you and you don't take it, you've not received it. This same way that a cashier extends their hand to give you your change. If you don't take it or accept it, you have not received your change back. And this takes us to our golden text, Colossians chapter 1, verse 19. In the King James Version, it reads, For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. In a different version, it reads, God in all his full, excuse me, in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. In the Amplified Version, I have that on the screen for you. We talked about God manifesting himself as Jesus, being born as a human and living as a human. Though God allowed himself to be born as a human, he was still God at the same time, or rather, he maintained his deity while in a human body, while in the flesh, while wearing a flesh suit. We think about Jesus being born in a manger, but this same Jesus had the fullness of deity, deity in him. He is not a helpless baby that we remember coming into the earth. Why is this important to remember? Any guesses? Did I give you a clue? Okay, I'll give you the answer. Because with all the things that are happening in the earth, we may be tempted to be discouraged, wonder what is happening, feel some kind of way about it. I mean, this has been some really heavy news. News about people being sick, news about war, news about money. That's really heavy news. But when we remember that Jesus is in control and has authority over all things, we can rest assured and have peace in him, not just about what is going on around us, but we can also entrust him with our lives. And, 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 and we can entrust him with those whom 
we love. So let's see what we learned today. Jesus made all things. As the creator, he has the ownership and authority. On a personal level, as our creator, he is over us and our lives as believers should reflect that towards him and as an example to others. Jesus' death on the cross allowed him to pay the debt of sin for us. With the debt being paid, a person cannot be charged or recharged for it. A bill that has been paid has a zero balance and cannot be paid again. We could not pay this bill ourselves, even if we wanted to. That is a part of what makes Jesus the greatest of all, doing the greatest thing for all people. It is important to remember that Jesus is in control and has authority over all things. Because of this, we can rest assured and have peace in him with what is going on around us. And we can also trust him with our lives as well as entrust him with those whom we love. So for homework, you are to read ahead for next week's lesson. And also, again, I remind you in honor of Black History Month, we're reading about persons of color in the Bible. And I want you to read about Simon of Cyrene, found in Mark chapter 15. If you haven't already, dun 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 Please join my Homework Hero Squad. New Year, new beginning. It is so important for you to know the word for yourself. In Psalms chapter 119, verse 11, King David states in the New International Version, I have hidden, I have carved out, made a purposeful place for your word in my heart that I might not, that I would be prevented from sinning, from committing offense against you. Some of that, I added my own words to explain it, but you get the idea. It's so important for you to know the word for yourself. Join me next week when we're going to be talking about made whole in Jesus. Our lesson text will be Colossians chapter 2 verses 6 through 19 and our focus verse or our golden text will be Colossians chapter 2 verse 10. As my final, excuse me, final word, I remind us that we are in prayer for our families, for our country, for our world, and please don't forget about yourself. Ooh, it's been a blast being with you for our Sunday School Christian Education Online. Join me again next time, but don't come alone. Invite others to join you where we will again look into the Word of God. I leave you with my borrowed saying from VeggieTales. God made you special and he loves you very much. Bye.